Well, his very two most favorite books were Pete the Cat and his four groovy buttons and Rex Rex it. Laura and Cody Brinkin spent hours and hours reading to their baby boy Isaac. Those colors and pictures and stuff, they would just instantly calm him. He loved the distraction from the surgeries, the pokes, and the prods. With everything that he went through, like how strong he was, um, and really made the best of what he had. Isaac spent most of his life at Sacred Heart Children's Hospital. It's where he was born last May, and where his parents first learned their only child had CHARGE syndrome. It's an extremely complex condition that can include vision and hearing loss, delays in development, and life-threatening defects. In Isaac's case, he had an underdeveloped heart. He was diagnosed with hypoplastic left heart syndrome. We just want to make him comfortable and happy as could be. And Laura and Cody cherished the five months they had with Isaac, playing <laughs> and reading. I think it kind of just made us kind of feel like a normal family in a sense. So we didn't get to do a lot of the normal baby things because he was hooked up to so much stuff. You couldn't just pick him up or do anything. Isaac passed away in October but his legacy lives on. Soon, a little cart full of books will roll around Sacred Heart's pediatric intensive care unit. Each child picks their favorite and gets to keep it. Even though it seems small, they are touching so many lives and every act of kindness, no matter how big or small, is really has the potential to just change something for somebody in a positive way. On the back of each book is a reminder of the brave, sweet little boy whose story will never be forgotten. I just think about, you know, all his horrible days and his 11 surgeries and in his five months and I think, you know, Isaac did, did that, you know, where we can do the little things and just, he was so strong, we can be strong too. For Miracle Monday, I'm Ariana Lake, KXLY4 News. They poked the first hole right here. You can still see where doctors poked a needle into four-year-old Levi Owen's chest in February to drain his lungs. His life hung in the balance. He had tested positive for influenza B, the adenovirus, pneumonia strep, and necrotizing pneumonia of his lungs, so it was eating his lungs. A ventilator and then an oscillator kept him breathing until even those machines were not enough. And they moved him this much, and it stopped his heart. So we got to watch all the monitors go completely blank. A nurse saved his life that day. It wasn't the last time Levi flatlined, though. Doctors knew he needed more than love to stay alive, so they suggested a form of life support called extracorporeal membrane oxygenation, or ECMO. The equipment would mimic Levi's lungs, giving his organs time to heal. So if you're ready to cry, here it comes. His chances of surviving ECMO were slim, but doctors said without it, he would die. So we signed the papers, which I'm felt so like we we're dead. signing him off to, to go to his death. And then we baptized him, it felt like we gave him last rites. It felt like a lifetime until Levi's doctor came back with an update. I said, I just need to know, is it good news or bad news? And it was good. But it was the happiest day of our lives. Levi was alive, but he wasn't done fighting for his life. While he was on ECMO, he started having kidney issues. Three nurses were with him every minute he was on dialysis. He had a double room because you couldn't fit any more machines in the room. Just when things looked really bad, Levi reminded his family he was a fighter. Yeah! Levi spent 51 days on ECMO, longer than any other kid at this hospital ever. He also broke international records for his treatment. All this was possible thanks to Children's Miracle Network, which pays for specialized nursing education and uses donations to pay for the machine used to save Levi's life. He's still here. And without those donations, he's not here. You got this. Levi Owen is a fighter. His scars tell that part of his story. His smile tells another tale. This is the hardest thing that we've ever had to go through in our entire lives. And, you know, we're still standing and we're, we're still here fighting. So, you know, as long as he fights, we fight. <laughs> the lessons come in many forms, from a math assignment Did you get all of them? Mm -hmm. to a crash course in geology. And even from a doctor's diagnosis. Daxton has brain cancer. 
At just nine years old, Dax Stanford is fighting for his life. Ready, set, go. He's been in and out of the hospital since last October. He has missed a lot of school since he got diagnosed, but it's nice to know that this is here and that he's able to continue his education. The classroom is coming to him at Sacred Heart Children's Hospital. It's nice to know that there are resources like this that we can uh, count on. The Andrew Rippin School Program is now in its third year in Spokane, helping kids learn and have some fun within the walls of the hospital. It's free for patients, thanks to local donations and a grant from the Rippin Foundation. Coordinator Maggie Rowe says it helps children now and in the future. We know it might just seem like one isolated school year while a kid gets through treatment, but we know the ripples from that situation are going to continue really long term. Tasia Johnson is already thinking ahead to her future at just five years old. E for elephant. Do your elephant. Once she beats cancer, she wants to be a firefighter. Because it helps people. Tasia and Dax are among more than 1,500 kids that have been part of this program. By the end of the day, many of them learn about much more than just science and math. We see their moods lifted and we see some friendships budding and that's the whole point of this program is to try to help kids feel a little more normal while they're here. <laughs> <laughs> There's something inside us all. It's been a journey. It really has been a journey. Something that persists despite all odds. Whitney Spilker sees that quality in her daughter Willow. In her eyes is hope. Looking back at it, I'm just like, how did we survive that? A doctor told Whitney and her husband William their daughter would probably die before she was born. Her grandma, Dee Spilker, still remembers how they felt hearing that. You feel your heart just go down to the pit of your stomach. There was an issue with Willow's blood flow, and doctors said soon she'd stop growing. So are you telling me? I have to decide that my baby's gonna die inside of me or outside of me, and he said yes. But Willow's family didn't give up on her. Whitney delivered her daughter in November at Sacred Heart Children's Hospital 13 weeks early. She weighed 13 ounces, that's less than a pound. Her legs were so small, a wedding band fit around her thigh. I call her my little warrior princess because she really, she really, is a little warrior. She spent three months in the neonatal intensive care unit where specialized machines and medications kept her alive. Willow avoided nearly all the common complications preemie babies have until finally it was time to go home. I couldn't believe this was really happening. Like, are you serious? They're letting me take her home. Imagine being that happy, that surprised at the <laughs> chance to put your baby in her own crib. <laughs> Now, Willow tips the scale at about seven pounds. Without that oxygen tube, you'd have few clues about the life she's lived and how she persisted. As long as she's gonna keep fighting and we're gonna keep fighting with her, for her. Through it all, this family held on to hope. That four letter word is something Willow will carry with her forever. After all, it is her middle name, Willow Hope Spilker. Don't give up the hope, keep the faith. Miracles happen, and she's our little miracle baby. For Miracle Monday, I'm Ariana Lake, KXLY 4 News. In a class full of kicks and punches is a young woman, strong and skilled. Each Taekwondo class gets Joy Moody closer to earning her yellow belt. Even with assistive technology, there's no missing her excitement. Tears? Yeah, how many more tests? Three more tests? three more chances to prove herself after so many other tests in life. When um, uh, she was born, we had no idea in advance that um, she was going to have Down syndrome, nor that she was going to have the significant heart defect that she had. Doctors at Providence Sacred Heart Medical Center diagnosed Joy with an endocardial cushion heart defect when she was born in 1992. Joy's mom, JJ Moody, put it simply, her daughter was born with a large hole in her heart. Joy had her first heart surgery at four months old. Those were some uh, challenging days. She survived two more surgeries by the time she turned 16. Without those surgeries, you know, she would have died of congestive heart failure. Instead, she can cycle, play ping pong, and take Taekwondo at the Northeast Youth Center. I go to Taekwondo with my friend Matthew on Monday and Wednesday evenings. Okay. 
It's an active lifestyle Dr. Jeremy Nicolarson says is possible because of the care she's had throughout her life at Sacred Heart. And it's really the successes of the pediatric care and the impact that Children's Miracle Network has had on that that sets these patients up to do well in adulthood. It, they make my job easy, really. Behind her, always, is a team of people ready to help her find joy and be joy. God is so good, and um, um, he knew ahead of time that, that she was going to be here. He gave us her name ahead of time, and, uh, and she truly is a joy. Hopefully by next year, Joy and her family will have one more miracle to be thankful for. When she gets that yellow belt, she's going to be walking on cloud nine. Aye! For Miracle Monday, I'm Ariana Lake, KXLY4 News. A Spokane family never imagined their newborn baby would be rushed into the NICU and have to stay there for weeks. This program depends on the community support. So if you'd like to volunteer as a tutor or if you'd like to donate money to buy school supplies, you can find all that information on our website, kxly.com. It's a tool specially designed to treat patients here at the NICU and it wouldn't be here without help from a local university and Children's Miracle Network.